hello and welcome to this God Day with me, Nikki. I hope you are doing well and have had a blessed week so far. And thank you so much for joining me on today's God Day, which I have entitled, Are You Facing the Lion's Den? Are you facing the lion's den? Well, let me start off by asking you some questions so we can understand what the lion's den is is. So I've got them written down here so I remember what they are. So my first question to you is, is God asking you to do something where you could possibly face challenging consequences if you go through with it? Are you in a situation where if you stay faithful to God, you will be persecuted for it? Or are you surrounded by people who make fun of you for your faith? or who are jealous of you because of where you are in life. Well, in this God day, to understand the lion's den and to understand someone who literally faced the lion's den and literally faced death, yet still stays strong in his faith and his dedication to God. We're gonna look at the book of Daniel, which gives us the history of Daniel and a few stories in there as well which can really encourage us today to stay strong in our faith. But I also feel like this might be a quite challenging message for some of us, because I feel some of us are very, we know that we have a relationship with God. And sometimes we can be obedient to him when it sounds easy or when it sounds positive. But when he tells us to do something challenging, that's when it tests our faith. How obedient are we when we face a lion's den? And we will see in the book of Daniel that he was very obedient. And we'll go through more in this God day. So this is also a message of encouragement to trust God. That if he is calling you to do something, he will be there with you to do it. And he will give you the protection you need to be able to follow through with your faith and then ultimately give the glory to God, like we'll see Daniel did many, many times. So maybe you're in a lion's den today. And if you follow what God is calling you to do, or if you're obedient to God, you might lose something. It could be your job. It could be friends or even family members or even your spouse. And you don't want to go through with it because you don't want to have to handle and deal with that loss. But you know, sometimes God takes things out of our lives because he knows it'll be more beneficial for us to not have that in our life. Whether it's because we're distracted by it and he's got other things planned for us and we are so distracted by this other thing that we're not looking at what he wants for us. Sometimes what we're hanging on to isn't good for us. And we think it's what we want, but actually it's harming us. And God loves you unconditionally and he wants the best for you. And he knows what is best for you. So sometimes, although it's hard and sometimes, although it hurts, God is telling you to let go of that thing. Or he's telling you to, he's trying to take it out of your life to give you something bigger and better. And some people actually risk losing their life to follow Jesus. There is so many people around the world who are persecuted for their faith. And we have a special program here on Revelation TV called the Persecuted Church, which takes a look each month at a different country. India, Nigeria, there's so many others where people stay strong in their faith as Christians even though Christianity might be the minority in their country. So many Christians having to praise God in secret in a Muslim country, otherwise they could face persecution and even death if they're found out. But you know what, even though this is gonna sound crazy, Jesus tells us to rejoice in our persecution. Now you wonder how can we do that? How can we rejoice when we are being targeted or threatened with death. Well, Jesus himself was persecuted 
So he understands exactly what we are going through. He completely understands all them people around the world that are suffering for their faith. Those who are hated because of their faith. Because Jesus was hated for what he taught. But in Matthew 5, verses 10 to 12, he says, Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. So Jesus is saying, rejoice and be glad. If you are being persecuted because of righteousness, and if you're being persecuted because of your faith in Jesus, then yours is the kingdom of heaven. Because you are staying steadfast with the word and with the truth and keeping your faith in Jesus, rather than being distracted by all the other worldly things around you. And take heart because you are not alone. The last verse there says, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. You are not the first person to be persecuted for your faith and you won't be the last. But that's why today I'm bringing you this message of the story of Daniel because he was persecuted for his faith. But we're gonna use him as an example to see how he dealt with it and how he was protected in it because of his dedication to God. Well, of course, it's always important to understand the context and history when we're reading from the Bible. So a brief history of Daniel is that he was a Jewish boy from Jerusalem. But he was taken captive by a king of Babylon, and this king was called Nebuchadnezzar. He invaded Jerusalem and took some of the possessions and the people with him back to Babylon. And Daniel was one of these people. But he had special qualities that King Nebuchadnezzar was looking for when taking people out of Jerusalem and taking them into Babylon. As it says in Daniel 1 verses 3 to 4, then the king ordered Ashpenaz, chief of his court officials, to bring to the king's service some of the Israelites from the royal family and the nobility. Young men without any physical defect, handsome, showing aptitude for every kind of learning, well informed, quick to understand, and qualified to serve in the king's palace. He was to teach them the language and the literature of the Babylonians. So we see in this verse that we have a description of Daniel. He has no physical defects. He's handsome. He's showing aptitude of every kind of learning. He's quick to understand and he's qualified to serve in the king's palace. So King Nebuchadnezzar's idea is that he wanted people who were moldable so that he could take them from Jer Jerusalem and their Jewish culture and bring them into Babylon and teach them the Babylonian culture so they could understand it, learn it, and serve the king in this culture. Now, Daniel, even though he was young, stuck to his faith right from the very beginning. And we will see as this God day goes on how strong his faith was until his older years as well. So although he was full of wisdom and he was a quick learner, God had given him them gifts and skills, and therefore he used them to keep glorifying God and not to glorify the false gods or the king of Babylonia. And although Joseph was learning the culture of Babylon, he still stuck to his morals and his faith with God. He didn't get overwhelmed or overtaken with the culture of Babylon. His Jewish roots were in him and God was in his heart and he knew what was right. He was in a strange land, a foreign land to what he'd been used to. Physically, he had moved from his hometown of Jerusalem and now he was living in Babylon. So his culture was completely different. And you may have physically moved somewhere recently you might have moved country or moved location. 
and where you were comfortable, where you knew God and where you were serving God may have now changed. You might be in a foreign land, physically or even spiritually, or just a new area of your life. You might have a new job that you're not used to. Wherever it is that you feel like you're in that foreign land, God came with you. Jesus said he will never leave nor forsake you. And to be honest, he's probably guided you to that place where you're at. Or if you find yourself in that place, God can use any situation and any place for his glory and to benefit you and bless you. So one first challenging question to you. If you find yourself in a foreign land, who are you obeying? God or the culture or the foreign land that you're in? Are you following what God's telling you to do? Or are you following what your workplace is telling you to do? Or the people around you are telling you to do? Non-Christians have a worldly mindset telling you what to do. Who are you following? So Daniel gained favor with King Nebuchadnezzar because he was able to interpret his dreams. And no one else in the land could do that. None of the magicians, no one could interpret what King Nebuchadnezzar's dream was. So Daniel gained favor with him for this. As it says in verse 17, chapter one, verse 17, God gave knowledge and understanding of all kinds of literature and learning. And Daniel could understand visions and dreams of all kinds. So as I mentioned earlier, God gave Daniel this gift to interpret dreams. But Daniel never used it for his own glorification. He never got puffed up with pride and said, look at me, look at the gift I've got. He was so well liked by King Nebuchadnezzar, the king of the land. He found favor with him, but not once did he let that go to his head and take it on his own shoulders. He always gave the glory back to God because he knew it was God that gave him the skills and the talents and gifts that he was using. And he always used these situations to point the people he was talking to, to God. Now, before the interpretation, before Daniel could interpret the dream, this is what it says in chapter two, verse 27. So King Nebuchadnezzar had asked Daniel, I'm not gonna tell you what the dream is, but I want you to interpret it for me. And Daniel replied, no wise man, enchanter, magician, or diviner can explain to the king the mystery he has asked about. But there is a God in heaven who reveals the mysteries. So there we go. Straight away, Daniel is saying, there's no one on this human earth, as a human, that can interpret this dream without you telling us what it is. But God can, because God is a God of the impossible. And he probably gave King Nebuchadnezzar the dream. And then he gave Daniel the abilities to interpret it. And after Daniel did interpret it, this is what King Nebuchadnezzar said in chapter two, verses 46. Then King Nebuchadnezzar fell before Daniel and paid him honor and ordered that an offering and incense be presented to him. The king said to Daniel, surely your God, who is the God of gods and the Lord of kings and a revealer of mysteries, for you were able to reveal this mystery. So Daniel was able to reveal God to King Nebuchadnezzar through the talent that God gave him. So when you use the gifts that God has given you, how do you react when people praise you? Do you let it all go to your head? Does it make you feel really good inside and think, yeah, I've got this? And there's nothing wrong with feeling good about it, especially if God has given you that talent to use and you've used it correctly. But we should always give the glory back to God because he's the one that gave it to us in the first place. And when you use God's gift, and you get noticed by people, do you use that as an opportunity to witness about Jesus? Just a couple of things for you to think about there. So going back to the book of Daniel, we're gonna fast forward now to chapter six, where there's a, now a king called Darius, who's king of Babylon. And he appointed Daniel to be an administrator over all the governors of the province. 
This was a big job for Daniel to have. And he was doing such a good job at it because he was full of wisdom, full of discernment, just had God has given him. But some of the other governors weren't very happy with Daniel because he was doing so well and because the King Darius liked him so much and had favor with him. So they wanted to find a way to get rid of him and they couldn't find fault in anything he was doing to serve the king. But they knew how dedicated he was to God. So what they did was they persuaded the king to make a decree that for the next 30 days, everybody in the land must only worship the king and nothing else. No other idols, no other gods. But Daniel, as I mentioned, was dedicated to his faith in God no matter what. And he, as he always did, continued with his prayer routine and his prayer life. As it says in Daniel chapter 6, 10 to 11. Now when Daniel learned that the decree had been published, he went home to his upstairs room where the windows opened towards Jerusalem. Three times a day, he got down on his knees and prayed, giving thanks to his God, just as he had done before. Then these men went as a group and found Daniel praying and asking God for help. So the first fact in this verse is he prayed three times a day. He had a prayer routine and a habit where he had communication and communion with God regularly three times a day. Maybe that's where his wisdom and discernment came from. So if you're feeling far from God today, why not try and form a prayer habit where even if you wake up first thing in the morning and you just thank God for the day. It also says that he prayed just as he had done before. So even though there was this decree out that no one else must pray to anybody else but the king, Daniel stuck with what he had done before and continued to thank and praise God. And when the governors found Daniel doing this, they had charge against him because he was breaking the decree by praying to God rather than glorifying the king. And they told King Darius about this. In verse 14, it says, when the king heard this, he was greatly distressed. He was determined to rescue Daniel, and make every effort until sundown to save him. Remember, King Darius had favor with Daniel and he didn't want to sentence him to the lion's den because that meant death but that was the punishment for breaking the decree. And this decree that the king had made couldn't be broken even by the king. So in verse 16, it says, so the king gave order and they brought Daniel and threw him into the lion's den. The king said to Daniel, may your God who serve continually rescue you. And thankfully that's exactly what happened. Daniel stayed faithful to God he continued his prayer habit of praying three times a day. He was dedicated and motivated to do God's will in his life. And he wasn't scared of death or persecution or punishment for what he had done because he knew God would be with him. And he was with him right in the lines then as we are about to see. Verses 19 to 24 says, at the first light of dawn, the king got up and hurried to the lion's den. When he came near the den, he called to Daniel in an anguished voice. Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God whom you serve continually been able to rescue you from the lions? Daniel answered, may the king live forever. My God sent his angel and he shut the mouths of the lions. They have not hurt me because I was found innocent in his sight nor have I ever done any wrong before you, your majesty. The king was overjoyed and gave the orders to lift Daniel out of the den. And when Daniel was lifted from the den, no wound was found on him because he had trusted in his God. At the king's command, the men who had falsely accused Daniel were brought in and thrown into the lion's den, along with their wives and children. And before they reached the floor of the den, the lions overpowered them and crushed all their bones. So God protected Daniel because he was faithful and trusted in him. He was in the lions then with him and performed a miracle 
It would seem impossible for anyone to survive a den of lions. I'm sure very hungry lions. But God is a God of the impossible. And he did this to show King Darius that he is Lord of all. And it also goes on to say that we have to be careful what we speak over other people because the governors ended up in the lion's den. They falsely accused Daniel and they set him up so he would end up in the lion's den. But he was protected and survived. Unfortunately for them, they were thrown in the den and they didn't survive. So King Darius then ended up respecting and praising God for what had happened. So once again, Daniel had used this situation to point people to God and to glorify him. In verses 25 to 28, it says, Then King Darius wrote to all the nations and peoples of every language in the earth, May you prosper greatly. I issue a decree that in every part of my kingdom, people must fear and reverence the God of Daniel. For he is the living God and he endures forever. His kingdom will not be destroyed. His dominion will never end. He rescues and he saves. He performs signs and wonders in the heavens and on the earth. And he rescued Daniel from the power of the lions. Isn't that incredible? How we now have King Darius praising God and sending out decree for others to respect the God of Daniel too. Now there's so much we can learn from the life of Daniel, but before we wrap up, I just wanna share quickly with you that I have experienced being in the lion's den quite literally, but in a very positive way. It's always been a dream of mine to hold a lion cub. I don't know why, I don't know where it come from, but I love lions and that was always on my bucket list to do. And I'm so happy to say I can now tick that off because there is a zoo here in Spain that's a very hands-on zoo. And I was there with a friend and they allowed me to go into the den of a lion. She was a lioness and I was so happy to be able to go in there. And she was a bit playful, so she wouldn't still stay still for very long. So with the handlers, I had to sort of chase her around the, the den a little bit, slowly, of course. But I did manage to stroke her and feel her fur, so I was very happy about that. But when I told people that I'd been in a lion's den, they were like, weren't you scared? That lion could have turned around and ripped any body part of you. Wasn't you scared? And I wasn't scared. Because firstly, I was more excited than anything. I could not believe I was actually stroking a lion. I didn't think it was ever going to happen, and it did. But I also trusted the lion handlers. They were there with me. I was behind them, and they were protecting me. The lioness knew them and knew not to be scared of me invading her den because they had the lion handlers there. So she felt comfortable and that made me feel comfortable. I knew that if anything was to go wrong, they would know what to do to safely get me out of that den and for me to be protected. And it's exactly the same with God. If you are facing a lion's den or you're in one and you're surrounded by danger, God is in there with you, just like the handlers were in there with me when I was in the lion's den. And if things turn round and turn nasty, God is there to protect you, especially if he's called you to be in that lion's den. He used Daniel's situation. He'd moved from a foreign land into a completely different culture, surrounded by people who were worshipping idols and doing things against God. Yet. He, God used the situation Daniel was in for Daniel to act out in obedience what God had asked him to do and in the end turn hearts to God and he protected him from the lion's den. So some points that we can learn as we wrap up from Daniel. Daniel always did what was right by God even when he faced punishment. He trusted his future was in God's hands and he didn't fear death. He made committed decisions and habits, such as prayer, which he stuck to even in the face of adversity, which means he had constant communication with God in the good times and in the bad. Daniel was dedicated 
and he persevered while never compromising his faith in God. He never took the glory or the credit for the actions that he portrayed. And he never accepted the riches that he was offered. When he pleased King Nebuchadnezzar and when he pleased King Darius, they offered him lots of offerings and incense and riches. But Daniel declined because that wasn't his motivation for the work he was doing. God was his motivation for the work he was doing. So I've got some more questions for you to finish this God day on. Do you hold so strongly onto your faith that whatever happens, you will do what God says? Such convictions can keep you a step ahead of temptation and give you wisdom and stability in changing circumstances by constantly having that communication with God so you can hear from him no matter what circumstance you are in. And finally, are you persecuted for your faith and your obedience to God like Daniel was? If you are, rejoice. I know it's hard. I know it's painful. I know you're in suffering, but rejoice because there are many prophets before you who were persecuted. Jesus himself was persecuted. Paul the apostle was persecuted for his faith, but they all remained strong and God remained with them every step of the way. So if you are suffering, if you are facing a lion's den today, remember God is with you, protecting you. Thank you so much for watching this God Day. I hope you have been blessed and I will see you very soon. Thank you.